Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 360 for FTC series. This is the 18th video in the series and if you haven't watched the previous 17 videos I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the video uh, the corner. Um, in the last couple videos we've looked at what joints are, how to create them, and how to modify them and control them. In this video we're going to be applying those skills that we learned onto our screw and nut project and we're going to be adding some joints um, so that it's all working properly. So I've created this new file here, screw and nut is just going to be our assembly file. I'm going to add my screw and nut in by right clicking and doing insert into current design. Just put it at the origin just like that. Do the same with the nut. Uh, add it in. I'm going to bring it down so I can just down here so I can see it well. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to align the bottom of the screw with the bottom the bottom of the nut with the bottom of the screw. Um, and then I want to align the, thre the threads of the screw and the nut. As we know, threads can only be threaded in at one point, and since we're just arbitrarily uh, putting the nut on the screw, there's no way that the threads are going to be aligned properly. So the first tool I'm going to use is the align tool. Uh, just like this, select the bottom of the, the screw, and we have to make sure that we select the right point on the, the, the screw here. So we can see if I selected this, it would be off center. We're just going to select this. And we can look from the top and make sure that that is centered. And yes, it is. Um, now we can see there's definitely some funky business going on here with this is like all overlapping. Um, so how are we going to fix this? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the, uh, the section analysis tool. We've used this before. Um, so I'm just going to uh, select my plane here just like this and cut it away um, so we can see the threads on the, the nut and the threads on the screw just like that uh, if we look from here again uh, we can see that the purple is the screw and the yellow is the nut and they are definitely overlapping this is not good um, so how are we going to fix this we're just going to rotate the nut um, around until the threads are aligned so I'm going to click move up here choose our nut and uh, I'm going to grab hold of this uh, right here so we get the, the degrees pop up. Um, and I'm just going to see which direction is the right direction to turn first. Um, yeah, that negative is the right direction. So I'm just going to increase this um, until it looks about right. Um, uh, you want this to be you want this to be pretty good. Uh, there's some tolerance above and below, so it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but just do your best so that the tolerance is the same. Uh, definitely make sure that this isn't overlapping or else it could cause some issues for you later. Um, just going to go like that and 115 looks great. Uh, the spacing here is about the same as the spacing here. So I'm going to click OK and now we can unhide our analysis. Look from the bottom that's looking much better. Um, now, so I've, I've already aligned everything. Everything's in position. I don't want that to change. So we're not going to use the joint. Um, it would mess with our, our aligning. So I'm going to use the as-built joint. Uh, go ahead and capture position here if you get this pop-up so it knows where everything is. Um, and the joint here that we're going to be using is the cylindrical joint. Is We want this to move up and rotate on the same axis up the screw. So I'm going to select my components and then I'm going to select um, my position of rotation. So I'm going to select the center of the nut, just like this. Now you can see it's moving up and down. That looks great. Um, so I'm going. we don't have to mix up the axis unless yours is messed up, but um, you can see that it's moving along the correct axis already. Click OK, um, just like that. Um, now, we have to make this, this move uh, realistically. We have some issues. One, it can go above the nut. The nut can the screw the screw the nut can clip into the screw head, um, and the nut can go off the threads, um, and also the the uh, it's not move it's not rotating and moving up in a realistic manner. Um, it's it's we remember that the the thread density determines how fast something rotates. For an M M4 screw, every 0.7 millimeters there is a, a thread, so that means there is 0.7 millimeters, it's rotated 360 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and add a parameter here, 
And yes, you can add them outside sketches and you can use them in tools outside sketches. So I'm going to um, choose, just going to name it uh, thread density. Um, and we can always change this later. Density. Um, we can change this later if we change the type of our screw or not. I'm going to use 0 0.7 because that's the correct value for M4. Click OK. OK. And then we can do um, our, our motion link. We haven't talked about this yet, but when you have a, a multi-joint joint, such as this cylindrical joint, which is made up of a slider and a revolute, you can use the motion link on itself to motion link its portions. So you can see that we can control the, um, the revolute and the slider independently. So I'm going to put my thread density here, just like that. And now we're saying for every 0 0.7 millimeters or our thread density, rotate 360 degrees. And now we can see that that is rotating properly. It's staying aligned the whole way up. We can click OK. Um, and now we've got that aligned. So let's focus on fixing our issues of it going off the the nut on the top, uh, off the screw on the top, and off the screw on the bottom. So for the part on the top, what we're going to do is we're going to enable contact sets. Just enable all contact. Um, and now you can see that if we if we uh, went here and we animated um, our, our joint just like this um, it would it would screw with this is a little bit laggy right now if I went to drive joints um, and went like this you could see that it, it I, I'm getting stopped at the top here um, it's really laggy sorry about that um, threads make it difficult for fusion but I'm getting stopped here just like we want to, and it would jump above. But this this is good. This is just how we want it. I get stopped at the top, but we can still go off the bottom, which is an issue. So the way that we're going to fix going off the bottom is we're going to edit joint limits. Now right click on our joint and edit joint limits. We do not want to mess with the rotate. We just want to mess with how far it can go up and down. So I'm going to choose slide as the slider portion. And I want my nut to stay fully threaded the whole time. So I'm going to ha this is going to be the bottom position for my nut. I don't want it to be partially threaded. Um, so I'm going to put the, um, the as we can see, the, the, the direction is facing down. So instead of choosing um, minimum here, and then this would be in the positive direction, this is actually the negative direction. So this is going to be our maximum, uh, just like that and zero millimeters. If we animate this, we can see that it's, it goes up and it doesn't go past here. That is perfect. Um, so now, if we animated our, our model here, um, it, it's being a little bit hard to use right now, but um, if we, it, you could see that if we drove our joints here, um, it would not go off the bottom and we could move it up just like that. It would stop and it would stop at the bottom. Just like that, that is perfect, wonderful. Um, so we have our joints um, all correct. And if we if we move this up, um, just like this, maybe halfway or something, and we turned on the analysis, we could see that our, our threads are staying aligned. And that is great. That means that we're rotating the right amount for how much we're moving up. Um, so I hope you learned something. I hope you've been able to follow along with this. Um, and I encourage you to join me in the next video where we're, we're going to be taking a look at the render uh, workspace. And we're finally going to be rendering our screw and nut, making it look real nice, giving it the correct appearances and everything. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.